does the American Dream support disability rights? It should. <laughs> Based on the definition, it definitely should. It's right there. Like, it's in it. It's not a stretch. Like, it, it should support those rights. Does it? Sometimes, but most of the time, no. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy 4th of July week. This video is coming out at a very patriotic time in the U.S., which makes me a little bit nervous. <laughs> To be honest, I had planned not even thinking about July or the holiday that falls in July in mind when I wanted to talk about the American dream and disability rights and had actually planned for it to come out at the end of July. And then I was looking at the calendar and I was like, yeah, no, that should definitely go around the 4th. Like that it fits, fits the calendar much better. And also we're tackling two big topics today. And sometimes people can feel a little spicy when we talk about big topics. So please be kind. We're gonna dive right in. The goal of this channel always is to inform, to encourage thinking, to encourage curiosity, to explore ideas and concepts that maybe aren't explored frequently in our culture and to do that in a way that's kind and compassionate towards ourselves and towards other people. That is staying consistent in this video as well, so I'm not here to slam anything, to put anything down, rather to be curious about the American dream, how it shows up in Americans and American businesses in particular, and then how does that fit in with disability rights? Do they work together? Do they work against each other? So that's the basic theme for today. Let's go. All right, the American dream. What is it? Does it mean what we think it does? So. Before I give you my definitions, pause for just a second. What does the American dream mean to you? Now, before I get into what I thought it was, I'm going to read you what the internet says it is. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the American dream is the ideal that every citizen of the United States should have an equal opportunity to achieve success and prosperity through hard work, determination, and initiative. I read that definition and I was like, that doesn't line up with what I thought it was <laughs> in my mind. Let me read another definition just to make sure. So the Encyclopedia Britannica cites the American dream as the ideal that the United States is a land of opportunity that allows the possibility of upward mobility, freedom, and equality for people of all classes who work hard and have the will to succeed. Were those definitions in line with the concept that you had established prior to hearing those? If so, great. <laughs> if not, not, you're in my camp and may have been surprised by these definitions. I think in my mind, when I hear the American dream, it feels like the, the image, I get more of an image in my mind, I think even than, than words. It's like, it's the white picket fence. It's the suburban lifestyle. It's the prosperity. It's you've climbed the corporate ladder. You have the dog and the house and the kids and the car. You've maybe beaten some odds and defied some obstacles, but you're comfortable. You're comfortable, you're successful, you have achieved a certain level of status. But I think there's an air in my mind of privilege that oftentimes comes along with that. It's kind of this, the American dream to me feels very idealistic, but not very often times achieved. That being said, we're gonna dive into a little bit of the origin of the American dream and then the journey of the American dream over the years and where that leads us to today. So the definitions that I just read are much more true to the original ideas and ideals around the American dream when America was first being established as a country. The American dream was on a very national level, liberty and justice for all. It was very corporate in, in mindset and not so much based on 
the individual, the American dream as this whole like society push or ideal. That shifted around the time of the Cold War and then the 1950s, and that's when the American dream become became much more individualized. And when you kind of moved away from this idea of nationwide justice and opportunity, and it became more specific to the individual fighting for their own happiness, their own success. That's when you see consumerism and capitalism really start to infiltrate more into the fabric of the country and also then infiltrate into this idea or ideal of the American dream. We are not going to tackle the concepts of consumerism and capitalism in this video today because I only have it in me to tackle so many topics at a time. But while I think we can identify that there have been some, some challenging or problematic themes with the way that the American dream has become so individualized, and we'll touch on that a little bit more when it comes specifically to disability rights, I think we still could argue that there were definitely some issues and problems with the way the, the American dream was established initially. Because if you're looking at, if our question goes back to, does the American dream support or push towards disability rights or does it push against it? When you read back those definitions from the beginning, the answer should be yes. And yet we recognize that the reality of the world that we live in is that the answer is no, it really doesn't. So where is where is that breakdown? That's what the question becomes. Where's the breakdown between the American dream is the opportunity for all people to achieve success if they are willing to do the work for it, and then recognizing that equal opportunity and rights, they're not widespread, right? They're not given to everyone. And that is consistent back with the origin story of America. So even though we're advocating for or talking about liberty and justice for all, that didn't apply to people of color, that didn't apply to women, right? There were a lot of marginalized groups that were excluded from what that initial dream or standard looked like. So we have kind of this umbrella, this mantra, this symbol of justice and liberty to push towards and to fight for that can and should include people of color, women, people with disabilities, etc. But we recognize that historically that hasn't been the case. And so there is a lot of fighting and there is a lot of pushing that has been happening and that also still needs to happen. So where's the breakdown? Where, where are things getting missed? How does the culture that's bred from this American dream have a tendency to push against or throw obstacles in the way of humans with disabilities having the same rights and opportunities that humans without disabilities do. I think that there's a couple different reasons. So we're gonna tackle those first and then we're going to talk about how we can reverse it. The first one being that the American dream, I do think, and again, these are my opinions, right? A lot of the things that I've been talking about so far are facts, factual. I'm making myself a little bit scared stating all of that, but the quotes that I've read, the little bit of history that we covered, most of that is factual. There's a little bit of my opinion mixed in with that. This part right here is truly my opinion, so I'm giving my honest feedback here. But I do think that the American dream mixed with the capitalism and the consumerism that we have and do experience in this modern age and era tend to promote a hustle culture, right? Do more be more. Those things are both vital and necessary if you want to succeed, if you want to achieve, if you want to have the life that you want to live, if you want to be seen with the kind of status that you want, if you want to be revered, respected, all of that, right? There's this be more, do more, do more, do more, do more, do more. Like there's there's this driver where people oftentimes compare themselves to feeling like they're on a hamster wheel, right? You're just going and going and going. I think that fights against disability rights and opportunities, not because people with disabilities aren't willing to do the work and to put in the time, but because non-disabled humans tend to view disabled humans as though they cannot be more and do more. Perception isn't everything, but it does account for a lot in terms of the opportunities that are given and granted. So when you're looking at equal employment opportunities, 
reasonable accommodations, buildings and classrooms and workplaces being accessible, a lot of times those things aren't being considered because of the perception, which is a bias, that humans with disabilities aren't capable of doing the things that a non-disabled person would be able to do. They're not able to work as hard, they're not able to perform as well, they're not able to to study or to learn in the same ways that a non-disabled student would be able to, right? There's, There's all this perception that creates obstacles and roadblocks and limits the opportunities that are even being given. And all of that has to do with perception and not based on the individual or their specific skill set, interest level, motivation, willingness to do the work, etc. We also, in conjunction with that, tend to have a pretty, non-disabled humans tend to have a pretty narrow view of what success actually looks like. And so we further narrow or further marginalize people whose brains and bodies may operate in a variety of ways because it doesn't fit within this lane or this box that has been created. And so therefore, it's not successful. It's not achieving what we need it to achieve. This person's not performing the way that we want them to perform because we've narrowed the definition of what that actually looks like. That ties hand in hand with this concept of hustle culture of be more, do more, but be more and do more in very specific ways. And when someone's brain or body may dictate an approach or a mindset or accomplishment level that falls outside of that, then we're not considering it, we're not celebrating it, we're not esteeming or rewarding it, and that further limits not only the opportunities that people are given to even have the chance in the first place, but then also to be rewarded for their work once they're doing the work. Shazen S teammates, your keyword for this week is independence. A second way that the American dream, I think, holds disability rights back is that breaking down bias and breaking down those those perceptions around disability, they take time and it can be difficult internal work. And people who are trying to hustle and be more and do more don't want to be slowed down. And so there's a sense of taking the time and doing the work to actually break down that bias for opportunities to be more equal. It's going to slow me down. I'm going to lose momentum on the things that I'm working for. And, and if I lose momentum, then I'm not going to achieve the goals that I have. And so it becomes still very focused on the individual. We tend to prioritize in our culture that it's every man for himself or every person for themselves and survival of the fittest. Both of those concepts can, I think, detract away from shared power and equal opportunities and rights because there tends within that survival of the fittest and every person for themselves mentality tends to be a viewpoint that sharing power or sharing privilege or sharing rights means that you as the power or the privilege holder now have less than you did before, which is not the way that it actually works. (laughs) Each person as a person, as a human has worth who has rights, has power because of their human standing and their humanity. It doesn't take away from one person's rights to have another person have the same rights, but that's not the way that it's always viewed. Ah, dang it, I should have worn my, I have a shirt that says equal rights for all does not mean less rights for some. It's not pie. Should have worn that one, but I forgot. Anyways, we can take a stance of shared power and shared privilege makes all of us stronger instead of making some weaker. So does the American dream support disability rights? It should. (laughs) Based on the definition, it definitely should. It's right there. Like it's in it. It's not a stretch. Like it, it should support those rights. Does it? Sometimes, but most of the time, no. For some of the reasons that I've listed above, this is not an exhaustive list. We could definitely come up with more. You're welcome to drop your own thoughts and comments below. But it also means that because those rights are written into the foundation of the country we live in, there is definitely room and opportunity to fight for them. And if we're going off of that theme and concept of shared power and shared privilege, if you are in a place 
in the world where you have naturally been given rights and opportunities, then there's room for you to use your voice and to use your power and to use the privilege that you do have to push and to advocate for rights for people who maybe haven't previously been given or granted them. Those are my thoughts, some of them at least. I gotta dip out for today. Thank you for being here. I'm so thankful to have you be part of this community. It's growing, which is exciting. So thanks for being thanks for being one of the, the loyal few who've been with us here at the start. We'll catch you all next week.